This is just going to be a quick overview, including stitching the nadir in Photoshop. Um, so you can open up PT GUI Pro, and the very first thing, if you've just purchased this, and this is going to save you hours and days and months off your life if you're going to continue to use this, is to go to your settings and your preferences, and the control point generator. Um, the default is 15. Now you can bring it up to about 50 or 60. Uh, and also expand the, the generation point. I think it's 8,000 or something in the beginning. Uh, generate at most. This is per project. So if you have like 40 panels to do in a batch stitching, which I've covered in another tutorial, uh, this will help out for batch stitching. But what we're concerned here mostly is, is this one. If you leave it at 15, you're going to be manually adding control points the rest of your life. And it's uh, there's no point because you can just move this up to 60 and uh, it's going to take care of a lot of your problems for you. I'll demonstrate it later what the difference is if um, you're not sure what that means. So you're going to load your images. Uh, I've done my shoot. I'm just going to take the first batch here. I've color coded them so I can quickly go in and grab these so I know that there's 12 there. Um, go to your crop tab, bring this up to close as possible to the edge without hitting that sort of uh, different colored area which is sort of the aberration of the, the the lens. That looks pretty good. Project Assistant, you can use the automatic if you want. Uh, checked or unchecked, it usually works anyway, so we're just going to align the images now. Adding control points, all 60 of them, so this can take a little bit longer. And we're going to use this button here to straighten the panorama out. So we have this along the line, straight along the horizon here. Okay, uh, next thing I like to do is go to your exposure and HDR settings. Don't worry about this. If you use 60 control points, you're going to be fine. Uh, go to fusion settings. And take a look at your, your HDR settings here. This is what I like to leave mine at. If we reset the defaults, uh, you can see it's, you know, not too much difference. So you can bring this down. And you can play with your Sigma a bit as well. Uh, anywhere in there. You can play around with this until you find something you like, but uh, this is not too bad. So just do OK. We're going to optimize now our response curve here. Don't worry too much about that. It's uh, sort of automatic. Uh, we can do a preview, but it's good to do, run the optimizer too. This is going to tell you how good it's going to turn out. So we run the optimizer. It's very good, which is great. Uh, that's about all you really need to do. So if you want to look at your control points, you can, but you can see that it's generating tons and tons and tons of control points. So you don't really need to go in and manually add these anymore uh, if you've been doing that, because this, this should really cover uh, everything. So you can even do the preview if you want to take a look around. Okay. So I really want to patch my Nadir here. My, because I have my shadow of me doing this as well. Uh, and that's basically what I want to fix. On the inside, I'm not going to worry too much uh, because I don't have the shadow. This, I'm not going to worry about too much. It happens even in the Google Stitcher. Um, I'm going to go back and go 15 control points and we're going to see the edge of this, um, what's going to happen here along the edge. Actually, I can show it better in our exposure HDR settings. It's a little higher quality. Oh, maybe not. But anyway, we'll see the edge of this this house here and see what happens uh, with only 15 control points. But for now, I'm just going to create the panorama. Oh, uh, one last thing is since I'm going to stitch the the nadir with this uh, tutorial, you're going to want to go up to the tools, numerical transform, and the pitch. Well, it's usually set to zero. You're going to mark this at negative 90, and I'll show you why. If we can go to tools, the panorama editor. This is the part we want to uh, fix in Photoshop, but if it's left like this, it's very difficult. It's best to put it in the middle and it's easier to um, 
fix. So if I just go back to our tools, numerical transform, apply that, and you'll see that it's in the middle now. And this is really easy to uh, to fix in Photoshop. So we'll go over to our create panorama, and we're going to create a TIFF file so we don't want to lose any quality while we are uh, fixing that nadir point. So set optimum size as well, and just and send see it you have the, your, this here. And also folder. I noticed um, this sort of a, a flare here. I'll go fix that one first. Now if you have ever fixed anything in Photoshop, it's usually the clone tool is the easiest to use. Just choose using your Alt key on your Mac, something next to it, and then you can start fixing it. So that's covered there pretty much. Yeah, it looks pretty good. So we'll move back over here, zoom out a little bit, make this a little larger. And we could just grab some using your Alt key somewhere out here and fill this in. I like to vary it a little bit so I go back out and grab some more texture. doesn't matter too much on a surface like this it's pretty actually easy so that is fixed so we'll just save it you can look around and if there's anything else you want to fix that that's fine but mainly it was this area here and that little flare so we'll save that over top of the old one and we'll go back in here and create a new project don't save this one. Oops. Well, here. You can create a new project here as well. Don't save. And we're going to bring that pano back over here. And make sure you do click this so it goes to 360 here. Now, you don't want to apply any settings on here. So you want to neutralize basically everything. So you can go to your, your uh, project settings. Exposure HDR is most important. We don't want to HDR it twice. So we'll choose no bracketing and we want to reset all these curves to something neutral and if you look in your settings here just go in and make sure that vignetting is off is disabled and optimize exposure we've already done all that so disable it we just want to change it to a JPEG now at this point and turn it back from the squared sort of with the square in the middle back to a normal um, looking panorama so with a 2 to 1 ratio tools just so you see here that it's still square and we'll change it back to uh, bring this numerical transform up and we'll go plus 90 on this and apply and it brings it back to how we had it originally and at this point you can save it since we've put everything at a, a neutral setting not to change our uh, panorama in any way create the panorama set optimum size JPEG quality you can bring it up to you know 96 percent or something like that 100 is going to be too much for the uh, ingestion into the Google editor so create panorama you might want to create a I'm just going to call this B since I've already done this once and create the panorama so this is doing one at a time it's uh, a little longer. You're going to want to, if you're happy with how this turned out, you can also go up here, file, and save it as a template. And then it's going to apply that those settings to pretty much every, um, not this one, but the one we did before, to uh, all your panoramas. And it's going to batch stitch them together, which I showed in another tutorial. So one last thing, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you what we happens when you go to your preferences and you leave them at the default here. 15 and 8000. This is where the frustrating part comes with using PT GUI. Uh, don't save.
Okay, so you're going to want to, I'll just show you what happens when you have only 15 control points on the same image. Oh, I'm going to bring it over to this window. It's not letting me uh, grab from another window. Bring the crop pet tab up here. It's going to speed up your generating control points. Line it up. Go to preview here. Let's get a little higher quality going. There's uh, 15 control points. You're going to have to go in and manually fix all this stuff. It's not worth it. Just pop it up to a higher number. Even look at the wires. They're all messed up. <clears throat> You're going to be spending too much time fooling around with this thinking that you have to generate more control points. So just pop it up to 60 or something like that and you're going to save some time. So uh, hope you enjoy the tutorial and uh, you can look at the other ones I have here. It might help you out a bit as well. Thanks. Have a great day.